everybody, this is Sue with Salvaterra Pottery from Weaverville, North Carolina, right outside of Asheville in our second video as we are locked down with the coronavirus. So at least now I have somebody to talk to since my assistants are not here. So today we are going to do what I call my medium serving bowl. So this is what it looks like. And I throw this at two and a half pounds. Last time I mentioned my, my cheap little spring scale. So here it is. Like I said, it's just a little scale that I bought, um, I don't know, at the grocery store. And uh, works perfect for me. So that's what I use. So here we go. Let's get that ball stuck on the wheel. Okay. And I didn't get it stuck on there very center, so we're going to have to get it centered. Up it goes. And I can tell down on the bottom it's not centered at all. Last time I talked about how I like to keep it really clean on the edge. I don't like excess clay down there. And I use a tool to scrape that off and push it back into the pot that I'm making. So there we go. We're getting pretty center there. So here's that little fancy hand thing I always do to flatten my piece out and yet keep it centered. Here we go. So this bowl is a great little bowl. So set, uh, serve maybe what mashed potatoes for six to eight people, something like that. Just a nice basic bowl that everybody should have in their kitchen. All right, so we have opened it up. I'm flattening out the bottom, getting it the thickness I like it. This clay's a little stiff today, so we're gonna have to push a little harder to work the clay. So. That's one thing that you have to learn how to do is how to adjust your touch given the stiffness and softness of your clay. Okay, so there I am. I'm gonna keep that bottom clean. I, a lot of potters don't do that. It's a personal preference. Um, I can't even say that my teacher actually taught us how to do it that way. So, all right. Here we go. We're gonna go for our first pull. You wanna thin it out about one third of the final destination of the thickness of the wall. Okay, that's our first pull. Compress on the top. I don't know, I always done it with my pinky. That's just how I do it. And now I'm gonna clean up that bottom again. Okay, add a little water. And then again, compress my bottom a little bit. Here we go, pull two, up we go, press, clean the bottom, get rid of a little bit of the excess water at the bottom, put a little more on the sides. You have a perfect balance of the right amount of water. Don't want to get your clay too soft, but you have to have it wet enough so the clay slides nicely through your fingers. Okay, we're starting to get it going here now. So this bowl, a lot of times I don't trim a foot on it, but I am going to take a bowl that I threw yesterday at the end of this video and show you how to trim a foot on a bowl. So now I'm just trying to shape it a little bit more to my liking. I want that really beautiful curve on in this bowl. I'm gonna start working on the foot a little bit. So it has a little bit. So let's see, I wanna get a rib. Well, actually I don't have it right here, so we're gonna do it without it. Um, I'm just gonna get try to get this beautiful curve in the bottom. The rib works really nicely for that. 
Now when this bowl dries, it'll actually kind of pull back up some as it's drying. It won't be exactly the shape. And I always like on majority of my bowls to have a flared lip at the top. I'm just working on this curve right now. I spent a little time doing that because you want a really beautiful curve that swoops down in that bowl. swirl in the bottom that I, I'm known for, that I always love, and then I'm going to clean it up with this mud tool sponge that I really like that just finishes things off so nicely. Okay, here's that little lip. Let's give it a little press. Just really like a nice little lip. Over here, back and forth, back and forth. I'm going to run the sponge across this. Okay, there we go. Not bad, not bad at all. I'm gonna pull it out of the bat system I told you about last time. Throw on double tempered masonite bats that my husband cut out for me. Cut off the bowl with the cutting wire. Try not to take a funny face like I usually do when I do that. All right, so there's our bowl. There's the inside of it. Looks very much like the one that I just showed you. And it will shrink about 12% during all the firings and everything. So let me set this aside. And I'm going to switch away from my master bat. I like to use a griffin grip to center my pots. Never learned that tapping method that a lot of people do. Don't have enough rhythm to do it is what I finally came to the conclusion. So I use a Griffin grip. Makes life a lot easier. Alright, so this isn't quite the same bowl as the one I just threw, but it is leather hard. I could handle it without you know distorting it or anything. But it's got a nice heavy bottom and I'm gonna set center this with the Griffin grip and we're gonna trim this a foot on it. There we go. Now, let's see how centered this is. Oh, not bad. Not bad. Okay, so I, my rim is pretty well centered to my foot, which is awesome. Okay, here we go. So the first tool I start out with is called a shore form tool, and you can find these at your hardware store. Um, well, and actually a lot of the clay places sell these with handles and everything, but I don't, you don't have to use a handle. So to me, this is where I get like a lot of clay off that I want to get off. And then I'll do a more refined, refining with the, uh, a different tool. So you can see it makes all this wonderful curls. I have to sweep every time after I'm done trimming because I get trimming all over the place. And you don't want that to dry up on the floor because before you know it, you're breathing the clay dust, which is not a good thing. So, okay, so I've just taken off and really got the shape I like to begin with for my foot. All right, so the next tool I'm gonna to grab is this one right here. And I like to use the side of it. And I'm gonna slow my wheel down. And I like to put a mark, that's what I start with of where my foot's going to be. So I put an indention in there and then I go ahead and trim this out a little bit. Alright. So my glaze will go to this edge right here and I love to have the foot, the raw clay, just show on the foot because this clay is a really pretty warm brown tone. All right, so now I'm establishing the inside edge of my foot. 
Okay, so I pretty much have figured out where my foot's gonna be. So now I'm gonna take, just carve clay out, slowly spiraling out. I take my time with this. I'm pretty fast at throwing, but I take my time with, with trimming. Because after all this, you don't wanna blow your bowl with, you know, doing a crappy foot or punching through it or anything. I take my time with it. I slow my wheel down and I, I do it so it's a really pretty foot. Because I want this bowl to have some lift to it. This bowl will also get cut out on the rim and have a handle, two handles put on it. It's not that it needs a handle, I think it just makes it look nice to have handles on it. So, last video I was talking about the coronavirus and um, the name of the business, Salvaterra Pottery. Salvaterra is an Italian name, and this is the story that's been passed down through the ages. Um, so there was a disease going on in some part of Italy. It was killing off a lot of people, kind of like the coronavirus, unfortunately. I have no dates, but I've had it verified by other Salvaterras that I've met through the years. Um, and so a group of people, not of them, all of them related, moved up to the mountains of Italy, which sometimes was Austria, depending on what war and borders, um, in a town called Tioni, which is part of the Tyrolean mountains. And so the majority of the people who made the move actually survived the disease. And so they took the name Salvaterra, which means saving land or saving earth because they believe that, that move in the mountains saved their lives by making that move. And so that's part of the reason I use Salvaterra as my business name because um, this wasn't my first profession. I worked in higher education and I wasn't exactly real mentally healthy. It uh, took a toll on me and when I found clay, I found a lot of balance um, in my life. And so when it came to actually starting the business and leaving higher education that I had my master's in, um, it, 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 it really saved me. And so Salvaterra just seemed like the appropriate name for the business. And I live in the mountains, so it just all seemed to connect. And so when, the other day I was thinking about it, I thought, gosh, we're in the mountains and we're distant from people. We aren't in like some of the big cities where we, we're on an acre and a half at home and, and the studio's on uh, four acres and um, just made me think about the name Salvaterra and um, how it could be relevant again. So any of you Salvaterras out there watching, got any more to add to the story of the name I would appreciate it because I always love to hear about it but anyway here's a foot let me take it off here and there it is and see how it gives the bowl a lift by having that foot on it and it changes the shape a little bit so that's how you trim a foot like I said take your time and I took a little longer there just to explain the Salvatore story, but it was nice to share with you, especially when I'm here by myself. So there you go. There's a, this is our small deep bowl is what we call it. So we will see you next time. Um, appreciate you tuning in. Hope you learned a little something. We'll keep the videos coming. Thanks. Bye.